finally, the best fit face mask with a filter pocket. I took the Sewing Channel's updated mask version and I turned it into the best fit face mask with filter pocket. Watch as I breathe in and out. That tells me that I have a very good fitting mask. For this best fit face mask with filter pocket, I took the CDC's recommendations, which haven't changed at all since the beginning, and I took the World Health Organization's recommendations, which did change. Before we get into all the data, I want you to note the chin area here. A lot of people had commented that I had a gap there, but notice I have a very tight seal right around my chin area. Otherwise, my mask would not go in and out. So let's talk about all this new data. Hi friends, Tracy here from the Sewing Channel. Well, the research has been done and the data's in, evidently, from the WHO, the World Health Organization, a handful of days ago, put out new fabric face mask guidelines. A little different than the CDC. Now the CDC has not changed since the beginning. The CDC still says 100% cotton woven fabric for their mask. Now the WHO says their new guidelines are 100% cotton on the face that's closest to the face and they want a polyester on the outside and for the middle they want polypropylene fabric, or it's not really fabric, it's non-woven, it's spun or something like that, I'm not sure. So they want that in the middle. They want a three-ply mask. I don't know about you, but I'm not wearing polyester this summer, out and about. Mm-mm, not happening. Now we did a little of both. What I did was to make this mask today was I used a 100% premium cotton for the outside. And for the inside, the side that's closest to the face, I used a 100% muslin cotton woven, nice tight weave. And for the middle, I used polypropylene, which they suggest made by Olefin or Olefin. I don't know how to say it. It's O-L-E-F-I-N, I believe. I found it at Joanne Fabrics. The care instructions say to wipe with a damp cloth. Hmm. I came home, I took a piece of this and I put it in my washer and my dryer. It came out fine, so I'm not quite sure. But then when my iron got too close to it, it melted. My recommendation, hand wash and lay out to dry. Now I know you all want to make this mask like ASAP, right? I did too. Next to me here, you're gonna see all the supplies that you're gonna need visually. They will also be down in the description box. There'll be links to all of it. There's the link to the free pattern for the filter pocket. For my friends who don't know how to get to the description box, look above here. There's going to be a link. Click it. It will teach you how to find the description box. It's very elusive. It really is. If you have trouble finding the olefin or the polypropylene, there are links in my description box underneath this video where I've made up kits with the olefin in them. Yep, or Olefin, whatever it is. Let's get busy. Most of my subscribers, when they print out this pattern, they're gonna realize real quick, this is a way different pattern piece. Don't let this pattern intimidate you. We're going to do it together, step by step. First things first, the two inch mark. After you've printed out your pattern, you need to take a ruler from your home and you need to match that ruler up with my two inch mark. Now, it has to be two inches. If it's anything less or anything more than two inches on that line, then you have printed it incorrectly and it will ruin your pattern. Let's take a look at this pattern that I printed out on my desktop computer looks pretty much the same, but wait a second, let's check the two inch mark. When I put my ruler up there, it is definitely smaller. The line is smaller than the two inches on my ruler. Now that tells me this pattern is going to be no good. Throw it out and recheck your printer settings. Your printer settings should be at 100% when you print this pattern out. 
that big pattern piece that I'm cutting out right here, that is going to be for both the outside of your mask and the inner portion of your mask, the part that touches your face. This is an important part. We need to make sure we cut this particular pattern piece out properly. You see I'm going around the dark area as I cut. Well, when I get to that dotted line area, I am going to continue up the hump and back down the hump and then around the entire mask. This is exactly what the pattern piece should look like when it is cut out properly. We are going to cut our pretty fabric first, the outside fabric, but before we do that, I need you to take that little hump that we talked about. As you see me do there, I want you to fold it back so that you cannot see it. Lay this pattern piece on the fold of that outside fabric and then cut out your pattern. Now lift that little hump back up that you had folded over and then I need you to take that big wing part and fold on that dotted line that was on the pattern when you printed it out. Lay your pattern piece on the fold as you see me do here and cut around the entire pattern piece, being sure to cut the hump area as well. Take your filter pattern, it's that smaller pattern piece on the pattern that you printed out. Fold your olefin material for your filter in half and cut it out. Because olefin doesn't fray, we're only going to just sew right around that curved area and that's it. After you've sewn around the filter, the olefin, I want you to just set that aside and we'll worry about that at the end. You should have two pieces that look just like mine. Take the white piece, that's the inner lining, the part that goes against your face, and you're going to fold it about a half an inch toward the wrong side of the fabric. You are going to fold that in twice. Now you can use that point right there as a guide to fold those over. Once you have it folded over twice, be sure and give it a good pressing. Now do the same thing to the other side. Fold it over twice. Each fold is a half an inch. And then you're going to give that a good press. What you're going to do next is fold it over to make sure that everything is symmetrical. If it's not, redo it. Now let's work on the outer fabric. You're going to do pretty much the same step here on both of these wings. You're going to turn them in toward the wrong side of the fabric about a half an inch each time you fold. Remember, you can use that pointed guide at the top right there as you fold and that will keep you right on track on your folds. Be sure to press them. Fold it in half and make sure that everything is symmetrical. If it's not, go back and fix it. Now take them both to your sewing machine and do a straight stitch right down the sides of each wing and that's going to tack that fold that you just made down. This is what it should look like. Now sew a straight stitch around the entire curved area on both pieces. In this next step, we are going to press our seams to the side, but I wanted to show you this is how it should end up when both pieces are connected together. The seams should nestle each other, one on either side, so we need to take note of that. Open up that front piece and push the seams to one side and then you're going to steam press them all over. Now I'm going to grab the piece that sits toward my face and I'm just going to double check and make sure that my seams are pressing properly in the right directions. Again, we are just going to steam press them in the opposite direction than the front of the mask. 
Now you're going to grab that skinny piece of scrap fabric and I believe it's five inches of the uh, skinny heat bond. You're going to lay the heat bond over the seam that you just pressed over. And then you're going to lay the piece of scrap fabric over that. And then we are going to press them from both sides so that those bond together. We are covering up the initial holes that we made with the sewing machine. For a nice finish on the front, I want you to do one line of top stitching right next to the seam in the front all the way down. It should look just like this. Now take the heat bond and that other skinny piece of scrap fabric and you're going to apply that to the front of the mask on the inside seam just like you see me do here. It's the same process as the inner lining that we just did. I had to get my sewing ham out to get that fabric to lay nice and flat. I really do think that the top stitching just adds a nice finished look here. Now let's make the nose piece. You're going to take that five inch by three inch scrap fabric and you're going to lay your quarter inch foam on top of it, just as you see me do. I'm going to lay my four inches, I believe, or five inches of heat bond on top of the foam. And then I'm going to add my non-rusting floral wire right there. I'm going to fold the scrap fabric up and I'm going to iron that together and seal that all in with that heat bond. Now you're going to sew just around where the wire is with your sewing machine. Find the middle where the wire is and then take your snips and snip some of the tension out of the curves. This next part even confuses me sometimes and I've gotten it wrong, trust me. With the inner side of the mask, the part that touches your face facing towards you, take the foam piece that's the squishy side of the foam, not the wire side, and put that right against the wrong side of the inner piece. Because when the right side of that white piece of fabric is touching our nose, we want the cushion from the foam to land on the bridge of our nose. Now sew that entire nose piece on to that white piece of fabric, as you see me pointing there, and get as close as you can into the seam allowance. Take notice that I did sew down the sides about a half an inch right next to the nose pieces so it helps it not to flip. Trim away all of the excess bulk at the top there. It should look something like this. With right sides together and center seams matching up, use clips to hold everything in place. I'm going to use real-time footage so that you see exactly what I'm doing. With right sides together, that purple wing I'm going to lift up. And you see where I had hemmed the white part? I'm going to cover half of the hem with that purple edge and fold that over. That's going to be my guide to where I want that to lay. You're going to put a couple clips to hold that nice in place.
the bottom chin area was shifting on me, so I'm going to go ahead and put a, a clip in there. Let's do the same thing on this purple wing that we did on the other purple wing. You're going to fold that up, only covering half of that white hem that we made. It should be about a quarter of an inch because remember we made it a half an inch. Go ahead and clip both sides in place. This is what it should look like before you take it to your sewing machine. You should have about six clips in there. Tacking down those wings and then tacking down the nose and the chin so everything doesn't shift. Now I know I say every step is important, right? But this step is also very important. You're going to take that clip off of the nose area. You're going to fold them together wing to wing just like you see me do here. We need to make sure that everything is symmetrical because I know some of you were having trouble with one side being longer than the other on some of your masks. So this will help that problem. This next step is a little different than what we normally do. We are going to put a quarter inch seam allowance across the top and across the bottom only. We are not gonna sew down the sides. Be sure where I'm pointing that that does not shift when you sew. If you're enjoying my tutorial today and you appreciate it, would you please consider showing your appreciation by simply subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell. Having more subscribers means me making more videos just like this. If you do subscribe today because of this video, please put it in the comments below. I could sure use some encouragement about now. Time to turn it right side out, right through the wing areas. Just pick either one. Be sure to poke out all of the corners. Here I'm just pressing everything in place with my fingers just to get it where I want it to go, and then I'm going to press it where I want it. Fold it in half and give it a good press that way as well. Make sure you press the inside too. Where I'm pointing right there, I added an extra stitch because I didn't want it to shift in the wash. Now take each wing and fold it up about a half an inch and go ahead and put a nice crease right there. Once everything is pressed, take a good look at it. Make sure it's symmetrical and that everything is where you would like it to be. Go ahead and stitch down the side, staying away from that crease that you just made. Now get your comfort elastic. Mine was approximately six inches, but I honestly could have only used five inches because it is very stretchy. Go ahead and feed it through the tubings at the end of each wing. I ended up double slip knotting both of my elastics because it was too loose. The comfort elastic that I'm using here and that I sell in my eBay store is the elastic that they use in the masks at the hospitals. It's that real soft, stretchy elastic. It is very comfortable. Go ahead and hide the slip knot right inside of the tubing or the casing that you just fed it through. This filter pocket is a nice large one that we will be able to put the olefin in that we made earlier at the beginning of this tutorial. So let's see. Let's open up the side there and yep, I already put one in there, but let's take it out and re-put it back in so we see what it's like. It is real flimsy, but it's supposed to be really good at filtering, so we'll see. We're going to go ahead and tuck it in there, and then with my hand on the other side, on the other part of the wing, I'm going to grab it through, and you're just going to kind of finger press it open there on the inside. Once it's laying flat inside, you are all set to go. Until next time on the sewing channel, take care.